that we have so far into a real web server. So I asked you guys last week to please make sure that you download WAMP, XAMPP, whatever, depending on your operating system. But anyway, when you download WAMP or XAND or any one of those, you're going to end up with a folder called Apache 2 or Apache or Apache Software Foundation or Apache 2.2, some kind of folder like that. Okay? And that folder will actually contain the web server. It's going to be the Apache web server. And it's going to have a bin directory with all, with all the executables that you're going to need for the server. And it's going to be some kind of configuration folder where you're going to play around with the configuration, the port, and all that stuff that you can listen to on, on the web server and all that stuff. But it's going to have it's going to have a folder called htdocs. And htdocs is going to be like your workspace in Eclipse. Okay? What is the purpose of your workspace in Eclipse? That's why you have all the projects, right? You create a brand new website project, it will be a folder under your workspace. Same kind of deal with htdocs. htdocs is the folder where all the websites that you have under this web server will live. And it will be a folder. A folder under htdocs. So in my case, I'm going to take this Timex Web. Where are you, Timex Web? It's in my sites, in my sites workspace. And I'm going to take this Timex Web, copy it, and I'm going to paste it. This is what it's typically called deployment to a web server. I'm going to paste it in my htdocs. Ah, that's a good question. Would a shortcut do it? You will have to configure the web server so that the shortcuts would actually take you to the right place in the file system where your files are. S yes, so not always, not a uh, shortcut would not always work unless you fiddle around with the, yeah, the, yeah. And now that you have your Timex web folder inside htdocs, all you have to do is start the server. Okay? Here it's I don't even know which one I'm hitting. And now instead of saying file whatever whatever whatever, now the protocol is going to be http. Okay? And the server is going to be localhost because it's a server that is running on my local machine. Okay, so the way to name it or to hit it is localhost. Localhost will default to a, a fixed IP address of 127.0.0.1, which you could also do that if you wanted to. And then you can say Timex underscore web and it's not found so that's probably not the right server or host just the local host yep that did it look at all these different I have it pointing to a different HT docs that's why duh I think I'm making it point to a different folder. This is back to the question that you were asking. What if you wanted to point to a different htdocs folder, right? Well, apparently I did that. I changed it to a different htdocs. So it's not really pointing to the htdocs under the Apache, but it's pointing to... And this is something that I'm going to go through the configuration later on with you guys. Um, but you don't need to know that. I mean, when you when you download the WAMP or XAMPP or whatever, it will it will tell you where the HTDocs is by default. 
You can change it later on if you want. But I think I have it under PHP projects. Yeah, most probably. So I'm going to paste my Timex web in there. Okay? It's a folder called PHP projects because that's that's where I'm going to be working the second half of the semester when we start developing PHP. So somewhere in here I gotta have a Timex web folder. Here it is, Timex web. And then a web content folder. And then the index. That's it. Now, cross your fingers that my menus will work. They do! How come? How did I make him work? I never told him to go to Timex web, web content, blah, 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 blah. Can you tell me how it come they're working even though I moved them to a different file system? Because the anchors, the href of your anchors should be relative to your web content. Don't ever, don't ever put a link hard-coded to a specific whatever, 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 whatever folder. Because if that, if somebody moves it somewhere else, it's not going to work. Always make your anchors relative to your co web content page. Okay? So in this case, notice that it automatically knows that it has to go to Timex Web Web Content by default. Because I made this anchor relative. And how do I do that? Well, if you guys analyze it with Firebug, I just put registration.htm. That's where I want it to go, right? And registration HTM should exist in the same folder that home, that index.htm, that login.htm, on all the other HTMs. And I don't care where you put them, it should always work. So now, notice that my website is working as if it were from the file system. But in reality, Take a look at the URL. You're hitting a real web server. It's localhost, Timex web, that's the name of the project, um, web content, all that stuff. Okay? And it's working. And that's exactly what I want you to do for next week. I want you to package your entire project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to download it, download the zip and unzip it into my web server. So it better work. Not this Sunday, but the next Sunday. Okay? This is a static HTML website. F five or six pages of them working under a web server, the Apache web server. And that's what you guys should be by now. Because the next two weeks, you guys will have to turn in 10 fully functional web pages. Okay? So what I want you to start working on for next week and the following one is, okay, okay, what are the functional requirements that I'm going to have to build? What is the most important one? Please don't tell me that you're going to build contact us and help and stuff that doesn't, it's not relevant. Okay, it's not relevant for the kind of application that you're building. I want you to actually implement a service, something that is useful from your website perspective. Okay? And that's what you're going to have to do the next two weeks, two functional requirements per week until you complete 10. Okay? And then the eighth week, that Sunday of that eighth week, you will be submitting a full website. Static HTML, just getting style sheets and JavaScript, jQuery if you want, 
working. I can deploy to an Apache web server and see it working as if it were the real thing. Got it? And then the fun starts. Because the second half, you're going to be rebuilding this website all over again using a database. In two weeks, you guys have to turn in your database as well. So start working on it. Start Right now, you should have a, a pretty much a good concept of what the UML diagram is. And later on, you're going to have to do it in a database. Now, next week, I will show you how I built my database. Okay? So I'm going to take that UML diagram and I'm going to go into a database, into my SQL database, and I'm going to show you how I build the tables, how I build the attributes, everything. So that the following week, you guys will turn it in. Any questions? If you guys go into my wiki, you guys will see I have completed all my functional requirements. Here they are. You want to see the 10 things that I'm implementing? Here they are. And there's a link to a snapshot. You want to see what it looks like? Here it is. Okay? And the Timex web version that I'm going to share with you tonight is going to be that full website that you guys are going to turn in two weeks from now. So you can see it. So you can see what I'm talking about. Alright? Any questions? Please, work on your functional requirements. I'm going to be looking at your wiki and I'm going to be reading what 10 functional requirements you're implementing. And if I do not agree, I'm going to cross it out and you're going to have to rebuild it. And I don't want you to do what some students did last semester and two semesters and three semesters. They put, oh, I'm going to do authentication. That's going to be uh, one of the functional requirements. And that's number three. And then down in number eight, they said, oh, I'm going to do login. Isn't authentication the same thing as login? It's just in different words. Please don't do that. Okay, because that's not going to count. Doing the same functional requirement with different interpretation is not going to work. Okay, remember, the question is, since we haven't developed anything in PHP, I can really show you a profile. I want you to show me what a profile of a real person will look like. Just show it to me. It's going to be a picture here. It's going to have the name, the date of birth, blah, blah, blah. It's going to look like this. Show me an example. I don't care if it's a real person or not. Okay? Believe me, this registration, I'm sorry, this unpaid timesheets, they're not real. But this page will give you a really good idea of what timesheet lists, regardless of whose timesheets are, will look like. Right? They're all fake data, but it will tell me what it's going to look like. Do the same thing. Give me a prof of, what a of what a profile will look like. Please, I'm, uh, I'm repeating the same stuff that I... I believe I mentioned last week do not put in your pages oh and in here I'm going to show a list of timesheets and that's your content no please that's laziness okay believe me the lazier you are at the beginning the more work you're going to have at the end alright guys that's it